today's uh, uh, my sermon title is uh, one who has a positive influence. Mada ya mahubiri yangu siku ya leo ni mtu mwenye ushawishi mzuri. Uh, today we have uh, one worship uh, and the ceremony uh, because of that I decided this kind of a title. Leo tuko na ibada moja maalum sana na kisha tuna sherehe ambayo itakuwa baada ya ibada hii ndio maana nikachagua mada ya ujumbe ilivyo siku ya leo. Uh, among the new words there is a term called the game a changer. Kati ya majina mapya ambayo yanatokezea siku za leo kuna jina ambalo linaitwa game changer kinara wa mabadiliko. The term game, uh, game changer refers to a person idea or event that completely changes an unfavorable situation into a favorable one in games matches or various contexts tukasema neno game changer kiingereza swahili tunasema kinara wa mabadiliko inamaanisha inaweza kuwa ni mtu ama uh, jambo fulani ama tukio fulani ambalo litakuja lifanye mabadiliko kama kulikuwa na hali ambayo haikupendeza ibadiliki iwe ni hali ya kupendeza iwe ni katika michezo ama katika mashindano na matukio mbalimbali originally it was a term used in sports but it is now widely used in various fields such as economy technology society and politics na neno hili game changer kinaro wa mabadiliko ni neno ambalo kiasili lilitumika kwa michezo peke yake lakini siku hizi inazidi kuenea katika nyanja mbalimbali mbali, inatumika katika uchumi, teknolojia, katika mambo ya kijamii na hata ndani ya siasa. For example, in, in a soccer game, it refers to a person who turns the tide of a losing game by scoring a goal to win or a person who fundamentally changes the industries the landscape with the innovative idea kwa mfano tukaongea kuhusu mchezo wa kandanda soka football tukaongea kuhusu mchezo huo game changer kinara wa mabadiliko ni yule mtu ambaye uh, timu yake ilikuwa inapoteza wamefungwa mabao mengi wanakaribia kupoteza lakini anaingia kwenye mchezo na anafunga mabao mengi na anabadilisha hali wanakuwa sasa ndio washindi ndio anaitwa game changer ama kwenye idara ya viwanda na uchumi hapa na pale mtu ambaye atakuja na maono mapya ya ubunifu na badilishe hali ya kiwanda na hata hali ya uchumi huyo anaitwa game changer kinara wa mabadiliko when we look at the bible we see that god always a person's game changer when he works tukitazama biblia pia tunaona ya kwamba katika hali zote mungu kila wakati alikuwa anaandaa mtu huyu game changer wa kuleta mabadiliko anapofanya kazi zake when the israelites were uh, living as slaves in egypt god called moses from the wilderness of Midian and through the event of the Exodus freed the Israelites and completely changed their circumstances. Kwa mfano tukitazama kuhusu wa Israeli walipokuwa naishi kama watumwa kule Misri maisha ya mateso pale ndipo Mungu akamuita Musa akiwa jangwani kule Midiani na kisha kupitia matukio ya kuhama na kutoka Misri akaweza kuachilia huru wa Israeli na maisha yao na hali yao ikabadilika kabisa kupitia huyu mtumishi wa Mungu Musa. Here Moses became the game changer. Na pale tunaweza sema Musa alikuwa ni game changer, kinara wa mabadiliko. When the Philistines and Israel were at war and Israel was on the verge of a crisis because of Goliath who came up from the Philistines young David appeared killed the Philistine and saved the Israel from the crisis mfano mwingine ni kuhusu wa Filisti walipokuwa napigana vita na Waisraeli Israeli ilikuwa inakaribia kushindwa kwa sababu kulikuwa na jitu aliyeitwa Goliath 
ambaye alitokezea kutoka kwa wafilisti wakawa sasa ni kama wanashindwa lakini kukatokezea kijana mdogo aitwaye Daudi akamuua huyo mfilisti na kwa kufanya hivyo akaokoa Waisraeli kutokana na tatizo hilo In this case young David was the game changer. Katika hali kama hiyo kijana Daudi alikuwa ni kinara wa mabadiliko. And today's passage we also see a game changer. Katika andiko la leo pia tunapatana na kinara mwingine wa mabadiliko. When King Ab worshiped idols the faith in God in Israel collapsed and God's prophets were killed. Ilikuwa ni wakati wa utawala wa mfalme Ahabu ambaye alihamasisha kuabudu sanamu na kwa kufanya hivyo imani kuelekea Mungu ya Waisraeli ilishuka na ikaporomoka na kisha watumishi wa Mungu manabii wakauawa. However the prophet Elijah achieved a spiritual victory by receiving an answer with the fire on Mount Carmel. Lakini kijumbe na hiyo baadaye Nabi Elia alipokea ushindi wa kiroho wa, kwa kupokea majibu ya moto kwenye mlimo wa Karmeli. When there was no rain for three years and six months and the people were dying, Elijah prayed to God and abundant rain fell, solving the problem of a drought. Na hali ingine wakati akuku kwa na mvua kule katika taifa lile kwa miaka mitatu na miezi sita mfululizo Watu wakawa ni njaa na kukufa na ni shida tupu lakini Elia kaingililia na akaomba mbele za Mungu kutokana na maombi yake kukanyesha mvua mingi ikatatua shida yao ya ukame. God's servant Elijah is the game changer. Na pale mtumishi wa Mungu Elia ni game changer, kinara wa mabadiliko. In this sense, I also pray to become a game changer for the revival of the church and for the flock. Na kwa mtazamo huo nami pia natamani niwe game changer kwa kanisa letu iweze kupata ufufuo na uamsho mkubwa. Amen. I hope that the three servants of the Lord who are being ordained today and the home cell leaders who are offering their dedication service will become game changers who change the world and bring remarkable remarkable to the church. Na mimi naomba na natumai ya kwamba wachungaji watatu watakao tawazwa siku ya leo pamoja na viongozi wote wa maeneo naomba ya kwamba muweze kufanyika ma game changer vinara wa mabadiliko ambao mtaleta mabadiliko kwenye dunia hii na mulete wa mwisho mkubwa wa ajabu kwenye kanisa letu. Amen. Game changers are those who have a positive influence on other neighbors, the church, society and the kingdom of God. Na hapa nikaongea kuhusu vinara wa mabadiliko na maanisha ni wale ambao wako na ushawishi mkubwa na ushawishi mzuri, yani wanaathiri vizuri sana majirani zao na kanisa lao, jamii yao na si duniani pekee wanaathiri pia ufalme wa Mungu kwa uzuri. The title of today's message is one who has a positive influence. Na ndio maana mada ya ujumbe wa leo ni mtu mwenye ushawishi mzuri. How can he become such a people? Sasa tutafikaji kuwa watu wa aina hiyo? Let's look through the scripture and the life of Elijah who lived the life of a positive influence. Hebu basi tuchunguze jinsi gani tutakuwa watu aina hiyo kwa kuangalia ndiko la leo na maisha ya Elia ambaye aliishi maisha ya ushawishi mzuri Firstly to become a person who has a positive influence one must be sensitive to the truth and spiritually strong Cha kwanza ambacho kitakuwezesha wewe uwe mtu mwenye ushawishi mzuri ni kwamba lazima uwe mwangalifu kuelekea neno la Mungu ambalo ni kweli na uwe na nguvu kiroho. And in, in the previous event before the three passages Elijah who won the spiritual battle on Mount Carmel killed all the false prophets who had a symbol of evil kabla tufikie tukio ambalo limeandikwa kwenye andiko la leo 
kuna tukio ambalo lilifanyika kabla ya hii ya leo ni pale ambapo Elia ambaye alishinda vita vya kiroho kwenye mlima Karmeli na akaua manabii wote wa uongo ambao walikuwa ni ishara ya uovu he became a spiritual victor a person who is spiritually strong na pale akafanyika mshindi kiroho mtu ambaye ni mwenye nguvu kiroho verse 40 says then eliza commanded them Seize the prophets of Baal don't let anyone get away they seized them and elisha held them poured down to the kishon valley and slaughtered there wafalme wa kwanza sura ya 18 ambayo ni somo la leo lakini kabla tufike ya leo mstari wake wa 40 inasema ya kwamba kisha elia akawaamuru akisema wakamate hao manabii wa bali Musimwache hata mmoja atoroke wakawakamata waka naye Elia akawaleta mpaka bonde la kishoni na kuwachinja huko What happened next Baada ya hapo nini kilitukia King Ahab who had been furious and sought to kill Elijah became subdued and followed Elijah's instructions Tunaona ya kwamba kutokana na hali hiyo matokeo ni kwamba yule mfalme Ahab ambaye alikuwa amejazwa na hasira na ghadhabu na ambaye alikuwa anatafuta sana kumuua huyu Elia alibadilika akawa sasa anawoga amenyenyekea amejisalimisha na anafuata maagizo ya Elia verses 41 to 42 first part says and Eliza said to Ahab go eat and drink for there is a sound of heavy rain so Ahab went off to Eden drink. Ndipo kwenye mstari wa 41 na moja na 42 na sehemu ya kwanza inasema Elia akamwambia Ahabu nenda ukale na kunywa kwa kuwa kuna sauti ya mvua kubwa. Hivyo Ahabu akaondoka ili kula na kunywa. Eliza advised the king Ahab once again, but this time he didn't speak directly. Instead he sent his servant to speak on his Behalf. Hiyo ni mara ya kwanza Elia anamshauri mfalme Ahabu lakini alimshauri tena mara ya pili lakini mara hii ya pili hakumuongelesha moja kwa moja badala yake alituma mtumishi wake aongee na mfalme Ahabu kwa niaba yake Verse 24 second process so Elijah said go and tell Ahab prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you ndipo kwenye mstari wa 44 sehemu ya pili inasema hivyo Elia akamwambia yule mtumishi nenda ukamwambie Ahabu tandika gari lako na ushuke kabla mvua haija kuzuia King Ahab listened to the servant and did as Elijah said. Na pale mfalme Ahabu akasikiliza maneno ya huyu mtumishi na akafanya vile aliagizwa na Elia. The flesh is meant to submit to the spirit. God a good overcomes evil. Thus Romans chapter 12 verse 10 and says overcome evil with God. Na kama vile mjuavyo kiroho ni kwamba mwili lazima isalimu amri itawaliwe na roho na ndio maana wema hushinda uovu. Kama vile tu Warumi sura ya 12 mstari wa 21 imetuagiza ya kwamba na sisi tushinde uovu kwa wema. And this sin depicts the spirit ruling over the flesh and goodness overcoming evil. Kwa hivyo tukio hili ambalo tumeliona linaonyesha wazi ya kwamba roho daima itakuwa ikitawala mwili na wema lazima itashinda uovu. Eliza became a person who had a positive influence that changed the situation. Na hivi basi tunaweza ona Elia alikuwa mtu aina gani? Alikuwa mtu ambaye alikuwa na ushawishi mzuri wa kuweza kubadilisha hali zote. The three years and six months of the drought must have been very difficult. But now finally the drought ended and the rain came haikosi miaka mitatu na miezi sita ya ukame ilikuwa ni wakati mgumu mgumu sana wa kuvumilia lakini kwa sasa hatimaye ukame ulikwisha na mvua ikawa imefika when eliza said in verse 41 that there is the sound of a heavy rain 
One is could be more welcomed by the people who had endured the drought. Na wakati kwenye mstari wa 41 Elia alipotamka na kusema ya kwamba kuna sauti ya mvua kubwa haikosi hiyo ingekuwa ni habari kubwa sana ambazo zilikaribisha mioyo ya watu kwa uzuri na kwa furaha kwa sababu walijua wamevumilia ukame kwa miaka mingi na sasa ukame unakaribia kuisha However the rain had not yet come the rain did not fall until verse 45 lakini shida ni kwamba hata kama alisema hivyo haikumaanisha kwamba mvua ilikuwa imekuja bado haikuwa imekuja hadi tunapofika kwenye mstari wa 45 ndipo mvua sasa ikanyesha verse 45 of first this process meanwhile the sky grew black with the clouds the wind rose or heavy rain started falling mustari wa 45 sehemu ya kwanza inasema wakati ule ule anga likawa jeusi kwa mawingu upepo ukainuka na mvua kubwa ikanyesha then did elijah lie na sasa ikisema hivyo je inamaanisha elia alisema uongo he clearly said he heard the sound of a rain even the sound of a heavy rain anasema vizuri kwa usafi hapa tunaona ya kwamba alisikia sauti ya mvua na si sauti tu pekee anasema sauti ya mvua mkubwa but in reality the sky was still clear with no cloud inside and the sun was shining brightly alisema hivyo lakini kihalisia jinsi ilivyokuwa alipokuwa natamka hivyo anga bado ilikuwa safi hakukuwa na wingu lolote na jua lilikuwa linaangaza kwa ukali it wasn't until verse 4 that a small cloud the size of a man's hand appeared mpaka tu kwenye mstari wa 44 ndipo wingu ndogo sana kiasi cha ukubwa wa mkono wa binadamu likaonekana here the word sound in original greek is a call which means a voice or a sound na hapa neno sauti tukarudi kwa lugha ya kiasili ya kigiriki inaitwa call ambayo inamaanisha sauti ama tuseme uh, kelele fulani therefore elijah did not hear the sound of rain but rather he heard the voice of god saying that the rain would come kwa hivyo elia akisema ya kwamba alisikia sauti ya mvua hapo fikiria kwa undani sana inamaanisha alisikia sauti ya mungu ikisema ya kwamba mvua itakuja first king chapter 18 verse 1 says after a long time in the third year the word of The Lord came to Elijah Go and present your to Ahab and I will send rain on the land Wafalme wa kwanza sura ya 18 mstari wa kwanza inasema baada ya muda mrefu katika mwaka wa tatu, neno la Bwana likamjia Elia ya kusema nenda ukajionyeshe kwa Ahabu na mimi nitanyesha mvua juu ya nchi looking at the sea with no cloud in sight and the sky over mount carmel it seemed like it would not rain at all na wakati huo kwa kutazama anga na kisha unaona hakuna wingu lolote pale linaonekana na ujue ni juu ya mlima wa karmeli inaka kana kwamba mvua haitawainyesha however elijah was a sensitive to the word of god lakini Elia na yeye alikuwa mwangalifu sana kusikia neno la Mungu. He didn't look at the circumstances but listened to God's word and was sensitive to the truth. Elia hakuangalia jinsi hali ilivyo katika uhalisia badala yake alisikia neno la Mungu na akawa mwangalifu sana kuelekea ukweli wa neno la Mungu. Those being ordained today as well as the homes and leaders must always be spiritually awake and sensitive to the word of truth to become people who have a positive influence that can change difficult situations and turn the tide. Amen. Ambao 
wanatawazwa siku ya leo pamoja na viongozi wote wanaojitia wakfu siku ya leo imewabidi na ni sharti na ni lazima muamuke kiroho na muwe waangalifu sana kuelekea neno la kweli ambalo ni la Mungu na mfanyike watu ambao wateza kuwa na ushawishi mzuri athari mzuri ya kuleta mabadiliko katika hali ngumu na kubadilisha mawimbi yote in short they need to have a spiritual knowledge kwa ufupi nasema ya kwamba lazima na mnahitaji maarifa ya kiroho There is a saying knowledge is a power. Kuna msemo ambao unasema knowledge is power. Maarifa ni nguvu. However, the knowledge that God speaks of is not worldly knowledge, but the knowledge of God. Spiritual knowledge there is a realized in Christ. Lakini maarifa ambayo Mungu anaongelelea hapa si maarifa ya kidunia na kimawazo yetu lakini ni maarifa ya Mungu maarifa ya kiroho ambayo utatambua kupitia Kristo peke yake Worldly knowledge belongs to many false fruit and is not perfect as it changes with the flow of time Ni kwa sababu maarifa ya kidunia ni maarifa ambayo imejazwa na uongo mwingi haiko kamilifu ni maarifa ambayo hubadilika kulingana na mpito wa wakati Even Moses who learned all the wisdom of Egypt was trained by God for 40 years to break down his knowledge honor and power and fill him with a spiritual knowledge before he was established as the leader of Exodus Nasema vile ni kwa sababu tazama hata mtumishi wa Mungu Musa mbeleni kabla aanze kutumika machoni pa Mungu alikuwa mtu msomi kabisa mtu ambaye alikuwa na hekima nyingi zote za dunia kule Misri lakini Mungu alimchukua akampeleka jangwani akamwadhibisha na kumfundisha kwa miaka arobaini na kipindi hicho cha miaka arobaini ilikuwa ni ya kumsaidia maarifa yale yote ya kidunia na heshima zote na nguvu na mamlaka zote azibomoe ndio kwamba abaki tupu na ajijaze kwa maarifa ya kiru roho ndipo pale akainuliwa kama kiongozi wa kiroho wa kuongoza wa Israeli watoke Misri because God is the foundation of all knowledge infinite knowledge they can distinguish good and evil is contained in the word of God na kwa sababu Mungu ndiye mwanzilishi wa maarifa Mungu ndiye msingi imara wa maarifa na ako na maarifa ambayo hayana mwisho maarifa ya kutofautisha mema na uovu anayo zote ndio maana tunasema maarifa yote ya kweli yanapatikana ndani ya neno la Mungu The reason many of God's servants and workers today cannot work in the power and wisdom of God is that they do not possess the kind of spiritual knowledge. Ukaangalia siku za leo watumishi wengi wa Mungu na wafanyikazi hata kanisani hawana uwezo wa kufanya kazi kwa nguvu na hekima za Mungu sababu ni moja tu kwa sababu hawaja jiami hawaja jibeba kwa maarifa ya kiroho bado. Therefore servants of the Lord and home leaders must read the Bible with the righteous thoughts and hearts they forgot study the gospel of sanctification and enrich themselves with the spiritual knowledge to receive God's utmost love and recognition ndio mane mewapasa wachungaji wote sana sana wanao tawazwa siku ya leo pamoja na viongozi wote ni lazima na lazima musome biblia na muwe na mawazo yenye haki ya Mungu muwe na mioyo yenye haki ya Mungu mbele za Bwana na musome kwa bidii sana injili hii ya utakaso ndio kwamba mujinawiri kwa maarifa ya kiroho na mpokee upendo mkubwa wa Mungu na Mungu awatambue kabisa After the death of the leader Moses Joshua took the baton. Baada ya kifo cha kiongozi wa Israeli Musa, Yoshua akachukua hatamu za uongozi. God prepared a person and the one who was prepared as Moses alternative was Joshua. Baada ya kifo cha Musa, Mungu aliandaa mtu fulani ambaye angebadilisha Musa, yani angechukua hatamu za uongozi wa Musa naye alikuwa ni Joshua. 
It was shortly after the Israelites had crossed the Red Sea and the Amalekites attacked. Ilikuwa tu ni muda mfupi tu baada ya Waisraeli kuvuka bahari ya Shamu na kisha kushambuliwa na Waameleki. A commander was appointed to the confront them and that commander was Joshua. Katika hali kama hiyo kuna kamanda mmoja aliyeteuliwa ndio kwamba akumbane na maadui wa Ameleki na huyo kamanda alikuwa ni Joshua. Exodus chapter 70 verse 8 to 10 says then Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephidim so Moses said to Joshua choose men for us and go out fight against the Amalek tomorrow I will station myself on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand Kitabu cha kutoka sura ya 17 mstari wa 8 na 10 na nasema Waameleki wakaja na kuwashambulia Waisraeli huko Refidimu Musa akamwambia Yoshua chagua baadhi ya watu wetu na uende kupigana na Waameleki kesho nitasimama juu ya kilima nikiwa na fimbo ya Mungu mkononi mwangu They tasted victory but what is important is the subsequent follow action God gave specific instructions pale walionja ushindi lakini cha maana zaidi ni kile ambacho kilitendeka baada ya pale na Mungu aliwapa maagizo fulani Exodus chapter 17 verse 14 first part says then the law said to Moses write this in a book as a memorial and recite it to Joshua Kitabu cha kutoka sura hiyo hiyo ya 17 mstari wa 14 inasema kwenye sehemu ya kwanza kisha bwana akamwambia Musa andika mambo haya katika kitabu ili yakumbukwe he did, uh, commanded the, the details of how they will be written in a book and they Joshua study and memorize it anasema yaandike katika kitabu ili yakumbukwe na uhakikishe kwamba Yoshua amesikia Aliamrisha hivyo ya kwamba uh, mipango yote ya vile walifanya hadi wakapata ushindi iandikwe kwenye kitabu ndiyo Yoshua asome na akumbuke atatumia baadaye. This way Joshua could build up spiritual knowledge on how God's power worked and what the secret of a victory was. Na hivi ndivyo Yoshua alijijenga kwa maarifa ya kiroho, maarifa ya kusoma na kukumbuka jinsi gani nguvu za Mungu zilitenda kazi na siri ya ushindi ni gani. Only by building up this kind of spiritual knowledge could Joshua continue to win in future battles and conquer Kenya following in Moses fourth steps. Ili mlazimu Yoshua afanye hivyo, ajijenge kwa aina ya maarifa ya kiroho na tena aweze kufuata nyayo za Musa vile alimwelekeza ilibidi afanye hivyo ndipo apate ushindi siku zijazo katika vita vijavyo vya kuteka nchi ya Canaan the bible says the truth will set you free biblia inatuambia kwamba nayo kweli itakuweka huru john chapter 8 verse 22 says Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Nikasema moja kwa moja utaipata kwenye Yohana sura ya 8 mstari wa 32 ambayo inasema nanyi mtajua kweli nayo kweli itawaweka huru. When I'm do with the word of truth one can experience a true freedom, true victory and true happiness to the spiritual abundance. Ni kusema ya kwamba kama yeyote atajiami kwa neno la Mungu ambalo ni kweli, basi huyo mtu atashuhudia uhuru wa kweli, furaha ya kweli, ushindi wa kweli na atajazwa na utele wa kiroho. God chooses to use those who love him from the heart and regard the word of truth as precious to them as a life. Kwa hivyo Mungu huchunguza na kuangalia angalia ni nani huyo anampenda kwa undani wa moyo wake nani huyo anaheshimu na anakuwa mwangalifu sana na neno la Mungu ambalo ni kweli na inakuwa ni kama kitu cha thamana sana katika maisha yake akapata mtu aina huyo ndio anamchagua na anamtumia 
Home cell leaders must clearly listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, be armed with the word of truth, and set an example for their cell members in character and action. Ndiyo mana imiwapasa viongozi wote amba munaongoza washirika katika maeneo lazima muwe watu wangalifu sana kusikia sauti ya roo mtakatifu na mujiami kwa neno la mungu ambalo ni kweli na kisha muweke kielelezo yani muwe mufano kwa washirika mufano kitabia na kimatendo Well, well armed with the word truth you can teach your cell members Share testimonies of answered prayers and experiences. Plant faith in them and bring them grace. Ni pale tu utakapo jiami kwa neno la kweli, neno la Mungu, ndipo utakuwa na uwezo na haki na kibali cha kufunza washirika wako neno la Mungu na pale utaweza kushirikiana nao maombi yako yaliyojibiwa na vile umeshuhudia mambo experience zako zote na pale ndipo utapanda mbegu ya imani ndani yao na utawashushia neema kutoka kwa Mungu. To know why congregants get hurt by pastors and workers. Mara mingi utapata washirika huumia sana na wanaumia kwa sababu ya wachungaji na viongozi. Je, unajua ni kwa sababu gani? It's because pastors and workers are not spiritually and personally prepared falling to impress upon the congregation. Mara mingi inakuwa vile na ikatokea vile ujue tu waziwazi ni kwamba ni kwa sababu mchungaji ama wafanyikazi ama viongozi kiroho hawajajiandaa hawako tayari na hata kibinafsi achana na mambo ya kiroho kibinafsi pia hawako tayari ndio maana wanakosa kupendeza na kutuliza hali ya washirika when the congregants are not overwhelmed by spiritual authority they get disappointed and hurt Mchungaji na kiongozi anafaa jazwa na mamlaka ya kiroho ndio kwamba iweze kuathiri washirika lakini isipofanyika hivyo washirika wasipoathiriwa na nguvu zako za kiroho pale ndipo wanakwazika wanavunjika moyo na wanaumia I hope that from a young age you will grow more in character and deepen your spirituality through much prayer and meditation on the word in this way you can possess a spirituality that can influence both the spirit and flesh becoming workers who have a positive influence nami natumai ya kwamba wachungaji wote wanaotawazwa na hata viongozi wote hata kama kati yenu wachungaji wanaotawazwa na viongozi kuna vijana mimi nataka na nawaombea mkuwe katika tabia na muzame sana katika mambo ya kiroho na mteza kutimiza hiyo kupitia maombi na kutafakari neno la Mungu kwa undani sana na kwa kufanya hivyo nyinyi wote mumiliki mambo ya kiroho ambayo yataathiri mambo ya kiroho na mambo ya kimwili ili mfanyiki wafanyikazi ambao mtakuwa na ushawishi mkubwa wa kiroho na mzuri katika hali zote. Secondly, ya pili, to become a person who has a positive influence, one must lead to the best outcome with the greatest good. Ya pili, ndio kwamba ufike kuwa mtu mwenye ushawishi mzuri katika hali zote lazima uwe mtu ambaye kila wakati unajikaza unatia bidii utende wema hata wema ya hali ya juu sana na pale ikufikishe katika matokeo bora zaidi Eliza went up to the top of Mount Carmel a place higher than where Ahab went to eat and drink to pray Tunaona tukio la kimafumbo hapa pale ambapo Elia aliamua kupanda kwenye kilele cha mlima wa Karmeli ni sehemu ambayo iko juu sana juu kuliko pale Ahabu alikuwa akikula na kunywa Elia alipanda kule juu kwa kusudi moja tu ya kuomba However the way he prayed was unique Lakini namna ama jinsi ambavyo aliomba juu ya kipekee ya kushangaza Verse 42 says So I went off to eat and drink but Elijah climbed to the top of the caramel bent down to the ground and put his face 
between his knees. Tazama vile nasema kwenye tuko kwenye wafalme wa kwanza sura ya 18 mstari wa 40 inasema hivi hivyo ahabu yule mfalme akaondoka ili kula na kunywa lakini Elia kapanda kileleni mwa Karmeli akasujudu akaweka kichwa chake katikati ya magoti yake 